want to welcome you to our week of prayer. Thank you for joining us this morning. Let us pray. Our loving Father and our God, we thank you for this new day that you have awakened us to see. It's not because of any goodness on our part, but we thank you, Father, for your love and your mercy that you have extended to us one more time. We commit ourselves to you now, and we pray, Lord, that you will be with each and every one of us as we come together, join hearts and hands to worship and to send a petition on behalf of your people. We pray for Pastor Billings in a special way as he speaks to your people. Speak to him and speak through him this morning, I pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. This morning, we are happy to have again with us Pastor Billings, and he will speak to us on the behalf of our Heavenly Father. We are grateful that he has made himself available so the Lord can use him. We ask that you will pray him up as he stand as God's representative to his people this morning. May you be blessed as he speaks to us. I will do the song of meditation at this time. Though man may strive to go beyond the reef of space, to crawl beyond the distant glimmering stars, this world's a room. So small within my master's house, the open the sky, but a portion of his yard. How big is God? How big and wide is vast domain to try to turn? These lips can only start. He's big enough to rule his mighty universe, yet small enough to live within my heart. As winter's chill, May cause the tiny seed to fall, to lie asleep, to wake by more summer's rain. The heart's grown cold, will warm and throb with life anew. The master start will bring a glow again. How big is God? How big and wide is vast domain? To try to tell, these lips can only start. He's big enough to rule mighty universe, yet small enough to live within my heart, yet small enough to live within my heart. This time Pastor Billings will speak to us good morning everyone thank you sister janet for your wonderful words in song these all good I, all these but goodies they say remind me of you but all the but goodies in these songs often take our heart to places how big is God? How vast is his domain? You see, when you look at what God has in heaven, 
plus the earth that he has made, you can't but help but say what an awesome God he is because he's a God who creates things that we only can see and imagine of how you see scientists can break down things and say they come from atoms but God can explain it to the greatest T to the last T or the dot of Iota we are so glad that that is a God we serve not a God who he makes but a God who makes us good morning everyone I hope and pray that you are all in a mood to serve God in the mood to hear from God and to mood to pray to God even more. We are happy that for the week we are safe thus far. I haven't heard of anyone who join us has lost their life or anything like that. I haven't heard that anyone in this group is hospitalized. And so we want to praise God for that. We want to praise him for his mercy. We know we don't deserve it, but he gives it to us anyway. Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14, I keep saying every morning that verse 8 tells me that Babylon has fallen. Babylon has fallen. Babylon is a system, a oppressive system, one system that is set above people that shouldn't have been. Babylon is a system that shouldn't have been, but it is. And because it is, we have to acknowledge it. Because it is, we have to say, yes, there is something that causes us pain. There is something that causes heartache, but at the same time, while you see Babylon, remember we have a God who is bigger and better. Bow your heads with me as we pray. Loving Father, even in this moment, we pray for guidance. We pray for knowledge. We pray for understanding. We ask you even now that you may uh, cover me under your blood, that you may wash me from all my sin, wash me, purge me, dear Father, that my words may come with truth and truth alone, that your spirit may shine forth in your people's life this morning, and that people, your person, your individual, your children, your uh, young ones, your big um, children, each and every one will find a joy in your word that they can see that though they go through this time, this time is a time that is telling us that God is about to put in his appearance. We don't know when, we don't know how, but we understand that it will happen. We just pray that we'll be on the side of righteousness when it does. In your Sunday, we pray and say thanks. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading, Daniel chapter 4. If uh, you were at church last year, you would have, well, not last year, it was earlier on in this year, uh, Pastor John's uh, Wayne Clark and I would have gone through Daniel. And I know if you're a good Adventist, not saying there is such thing, well, there is such thing as bad Adventist, but there, if you're a good Adventist, if it's even once, you would have heard about the book of Daniel. Daniel is really related to Revelation, especially when it comes on to prophecy. But I have come to find out that the three angels' message has a little root, has a little understanding, even in the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 1 tells us that because of Jehoiakim's sin, because of his wrongdoing, because he would have neglected the God. Can I tell you something? When God people stop listening to God, God it would no when God's people let me say it this way when God's people stop listening and speaking to God then Babylon Babylon seems to reign even more whensoever you find God people neglecting the word of God neglecting his voice neglecting his ordinance neglecting those things he would have instructed us to do Babylon seems to be at its strongest. The Bible would have us to understand that it was because God chosen people, because those same people who God would have called out of sin, give them a special message, give them a special task, give them the work that he needs to be done, give them an opportunity at salvation. Those same people who would have been set apart, called out because they were called out as royal, they were acting as if they were any and anybody. They were acting as the world. They were doing things as the world would have done it. They were speaking worldly things, dressing worldly, and everything about them said that they were just common 
men, common human being. Can I tell you, Montego Bay, be careful when you see the church or uh, any church acting as if they aren't called or set apart. When they act as if they are supposed to be just like any worldly. And I hear an uncle of mine tell me he is not an Adventist, but he tells me that a Christian cannot just look and talk like the world because how can you be calling people out of world of sin yet you and them are saying drinking from the same cup talking the same language acting the same way it is confusing and anytime you find God's people not living up to what they are called to do find out that Babylon gets strong but can I tell you don't be disheartened be not dismayed what ear be tied God will take care of you all you gotta do is ensure when the mass is going to the to the Babylon when the mass is going down that you must always keep a song in your heart and a prayer on your lips remind God that you don't want to perish in your sin but by chapter two we are told that two little boy, uh, three Hebrew boys, stood up to 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 King Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, King Nebuchadnezzar was a leader of that great army, which would have subdued the kings of uh, uh, the kings of the world. He would have conquered those that would have conquered before. He would have built himself up in a way that it seems as if it was impossible to defeat him. He got everything from Israel. He got their gold. He got their strong men. He got the woman. He got the money. He got everything that shows that he is powerful. Can I tell you, do not look with your natural eyes. This warfare is not just a war that can be seen with natural eyes. Sometimes you've got to ask God to wash your eyes and allow you to see as how he sees. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. You are looking for a greater day, a better day. And because of that, you have to pray for faith that you can look over into yonder, that you can take a glimpse into the things that God would have prepare it says eyes have not seen neither ear, um, uh, ears have heard neither it enter into the thoughts of men the things that God would have prepared for us except the spirit reveal can I tell you that the spirit is still revealing things today so that you and I can take a glimpse into eternity so we can take a glimpse into freedom but sometimes because we are looking with our natural eyes the things of the world seem to outdo the things of God but the Bible says that these three, uh, these two boys, uh, three boys would have stood against him. But it seems as if the world is not learning. It seems as if Babylon is not learning. It seems as if Nebuchadnezzar is not learning. Time after time, he would have done things which would have uh, caused him to be ashamed. Time after time, he would have uh, gathered people to do and interpret things that he needed, cannot understand. But every time God revealed himself to Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar find himself back at a point where God had to speak to him. Yes, the world understand that there is a God, but openly, openly, they neglect him openly. They say away with him and even the church at times do the same thing. A time after time, time they would have seen they would have understand that there is vision there is prophecy there is instruction in the word of God that tells them that they must run and seek him while he still may be found call upon him while he still is near but time after time day after day months after months weeks after weeks we are still doing the same thing hearing from God but actually as if God is not speaking, hearing from God, but neglecting what he has said, hearing from God, but openly put him to shame. By chapter three, we are told that Nebuchadnezzar got a dream in chapter two, but by chapter three, 
Nebuchadnezzar took it out, out took up things in his own hands and he created the image and one image he received in a dream told him that he will not last forever but he thought of himself strong and mighty a victor a man of valor he says that i'm going to show god that i can build my own image i can build my own statue i can build up myself in a way that nobody cannot destroy me yes he saw that he was just the head he was just God at the top of it. His kingdom was big. His kingdom was large. Yes, it was. But he realized that after him, a lesser kingdom would have come and taken over. After him, somebody would have defeated him. Even so, at the end of it all, that there would be a stone that would have cast down every kingdom. But Nebuchadnezzar said to himself, I want to show these people, I want to show these individuals that I am God on earth and I stand and I will stand forever. He created his image in perfect God. He created it so that people will see him strong and mighty. But can I tell you whensoever you see the enemy is at the strongest Whensoever you see the enemy raging and winning the battle, it seems as if he is winning the battle. Just watch how God is about to give the enemy a blow. You see, God is a God who can take a job or two. Yes, you may see him in the boxing ring and the devil may be seen as if he is about to fall. Yes, the devil is landing uppercuts. Yes, the devil is working his ribs. But watch when God sends his blow. The enemy cannot manage. But by chapter four, we are told that by this time, God was about to show Nebuchadnezzar once again and again, he received a vision again. He received a word again. He heard from a preacher. Again, he heard a song being sing. Again, he got a reminder. Again and again, the individuals hearing sermons after sermons, songs after songs, testimonies after testimonies and they are still neglecting that same thing to say that this earth that we see today will not last forever that they are hearing that the only way of escape is wrapped up in the man called Jesus Christ but again and again we are rejecting again and again we are trying to find hope in things that will not last again and again we are trying to save ourselves but the Bible is saying that if you see a and if you can hear God, I'm asking you, harden not your heart again and again. Nebuchadnezzar was acting as if he was bad, big, bad, and bored. But can I tell you, I hear that when you get too merry, all time people say, chicken merry, that means that there is a heart that is near. Oh, let me say it in fact, for those who want chicken merry heart in here. But if you can't understand it, it means when the enemy is at his highest point, that is a time when people are mostly happy. When the enemy is at his big point, yes, you cannot see that danger is ahead. When you are happy, you don't look for things that will damage you because all you are wrapped up and tied up in is happiness. I see the world today. Everything that tells you, it says that you must live life at its fullest, not telling you that you must live life with the expectation that you will die after. I wish I was at church so I could hear from you. But I'm telling you, when you see the world is at its merry state, I tell you, look back in Noah's time, they were happy. They were giving into marriage. They were having parties. They were having things and doing things that they weren't, they know wasn't right. But they were all merry. It was all merrymaking. In the time of luck, there were at the same point marrying enjoying the things that of the world enjoying even the things that God would have created and instituted in an unholy manner but at the same time while they were merry God was planning his way of destruction don't watch the merrymaking keep your eyes on Jesus Nebuchadnezzar he dreamt yet another dream. Ah, I hear our old time song say, so fall in love with a dreamer, but we are not singing that song. But here is what, Mary making was Nebuchadnezzar's, not Nebuchadnezzar's fault. But he was a proud man. Again, he got the instruction that there is a God that supersedes him. 
Again, he got another one in that, guess what? You, O Nebuchadnezzar, or scripture reading says, that he, it is thou, O Nebuchadnezzar, that you have grown and become strong. Babylon, you have grown and become strong, for thy greatness is grown. When you look around, you know, evidence is there that yes, Babylon has grown. But guess what? You have reached unto heaven, and thy dominion is uh, thy dom dominion to the ends of the earth. When you look, there is nowhere where you can't see the evidence of the devil. There is no place on earth that you can say the devil has not been there. The devil has not tarnished it. The devil has not corrupted it. The devil has not subdued it. The devil has reached the ends of the earth. Here's what the Bible says next. And we, as the king says, a watcher, a holy one, came down from heaven, saying, Hew the tree down, destroy it, yet leave the stump of the root thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass. Ah, I told you yesterday that there was a holy one who came from heaven wrapped in swaddling clothes, who was not a, a big shot like you and I, who never just fancy, who's hunger so that you and I may be fed, who thirst so that you may have, you and I may have living water, who bled that you and I may not have to die, who died but rose again so that you and I can have freedom. But yet he says, just watch and see, I will not fully destroy Babylon as yet. I will leave a little stump for you to be reminded that you are a frail man and you need to serve me with all your heart. Babylon has left a stump. There is not the big tree. I cannot tell you this, that though you see Babylon around you, it is not as great as you think because it has already received the blow that has damaged it throughout time. I tell you yesterday, that God has already won the battle. That victory is already yours. But the truth is there is just a stump of Babylon remaining for a time that is at hand that he will perfectly destroy it with fire if you cut down a tree. And Brother Bowen, you may know if you put fire to it, that tree will eventually die. But if you just cut down the tree, there is a chance that the tree might grow again. But God says, I leave but a stump, not a big thing. It has already received it blow. I'm cutting it down to a level. I'm cutting it down to a place that it will recognize that there is a God and not only him, but others will look and see that it is but a stump. It is not as strong as it thinks it is can i tell you that babylon may seem strong but god has already cut it down to a place where you and i can look at it and just say babylon is but a stump oh i wish i had some time ah Babylon is but a stump that mean when you see the things of the world, they are only deceiving. They are not as strong as they see. Money is not as strong. Happiness in the world is not as enjoyable as it seems. The things of the world are not as clear as crystal. So you are looking at them not with 20 of 20 vision, but with adult vision. But when you ask God to open your eyes, then you will realize that these things are but for a time. Hence, they will not last forever. The only thing I tell you that lasts forever is wrapped up and a life wrapped up and tied up in a man called Jesus. And so that is where you need your life to be. Each day you must consecrate yourself afresh. Say, take me, O oh Lord, sister, for reminders. Take me, O oh Lord, use me at thy service because I realize that serving you is the only thing thing that matter. Yes, Nebuchadnezzar was at his eyes. Yes, he got cut down and it only seemed but here is what the Bible tells us. That this is a God that we serve. When you look around it, it would seem as if the devil is winning but this is the God that we serve. He says, I am God and there is none like me. There is none that will, I am God and there is none like me. I am the God who raised King up. 
And I'm the same God who is able to take them down. You see, Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon were thinking that the only reason why they are winning was because of their strength, was because of their battle strategies, was because of the. But it was only because God people weren't down on their knees talking to him. I wish I had some worshiper with me this morning. It was only because God's people were neglecting his word. It was only because God's people were far behind their spiritual life. They were not paying attention to the things that they needed to. It was only because God people were stopped, would have stopped speaking to God why Nebuchadnezzar had such a great kingdom. It was only because, because God says that his people should be the head and not the tail. What does that mean, Montego Bay? It means that in Montego Bay people who are called by his name would just humble themselves and seek him that God would raise them up in a time like this, that God will allow them to, allow, to give the enemy a blow. If God's people would have just stopped quarreling, stop quarreling about church uh, offices, stop worrying about tithe, stop worrying about the mark of the beast, stop worrying about who is at the head of the church and start praying to the God who is at the head of life itself. It means, therefore, if God's people, you see, I hear a statement once, it says that chicken say, if I was able to pray like humans, I would have already conquered the world. What does that mean? You see the way a chicken legs stay. Every time it says, I want to go down on my knee, I find myself falling back. Look at a chicken and you will understand. It means, therefore, if God's people would have been praying a little bit longer, if they were at their knees more than they were at their enemies, if they were at the, oh, what does that mean, preacher? Let me get back that and set it a little bit better so you can understand. If God's people were talking to God as much as how they were gossiping, then church would have been better. Ah, somebody missed it. If God's people would have been praying to God just as how they are talking about their beach brothers and sisters, their fault, then they would have find themselves in a better place. If God's people were crying in their brothers and sisters fall to God with earnest and fervent prayer, then you would have find that we would have had a better church. But the same mode that we are given to praise God is the same mode that we are causing the enemy to use to destroy God's kingdom. But God says, I'm so glad that he says that the battle is his. And so he is fighting it because if he allow Pastor Billings to fight it, then he will run it into wreck. But God says, I'm fighting the battle because I know that you are weak, but I am strong. I know that you faint, but I am a God who faint not. I know that you forget but I am God who never forget. I know you are weak, but I'm all powerful. I know you forget, but I'm omniscient. I know, you, ah, somebody missed that. But God is fighting for you and I to understand that the battle, while we see it raging on, that it is only a stomp of the devil that remains, don't allow the stomp to get you down. Even though at times you may buck your feet or uh, your foot, on the devil's stump, even though you might see it seems as if it's about to grow again. Don't watch it because God has already cut it down to a place that you and I can walk and live and talk and enjoy life. Knowing that the devil is already defeated, knowing that he has no power, no dominion, because God himself, I hear that the devil is the prince of the world, but I told my brother once, you see, every time I hear about a prince, that means there is a king, somebody missed it. Even though the devil is a prince of this world, God is still the king, and there is still a king that sits on the throne. And once he is there, I know I can take my force to him, knowing he can make my force right. Ah, I am so glad that today I'm reminded that even though Nebuchadnezzar is saying, I hear him say in verse, look at this. Let me, let me get back that. I'm getting a little bit excited, but the church is not here. So you can't see me. Here is what the Bible says. Even though Nebuchadnezzar got the instruction again and again and again, three times here, he would have already gotten a evident a, 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 a notice. Well, you could say four times he got evidence that God reigned supreme over his will. Uh, even though Nebuchadnezzar heard this again and again. Here is what happened. In verse um, 29, and 30 of chapter 4, it says, at the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. And just the same, 
The devil, since God would have left earth, since Jesus would have left earth, this is his final act. This is his final deception. He is walking. No, this is not his final deception. One is to come after the thousand years. But here is what the devil is walking around, talking and acting as if he is big, even though he knows he's not that strong. After 12 years, here is Nebuchadnezzar walking in his kingdom and he's looking at the goal. You see, if you were living in Babylon, we said in Bible class, that Babylon's walls were great and when he looked on the walls of Babylon he says in this the great Babylon that I have built when he looked in his treasury he saw the walls that belongs to Jerusalem he saw gold that belongs to other nations and yet it was all in his kingdom it was all in his domain when he saw the women that were in his palace the women that he would have chosen handpicked he looked at them and he says isn't this the great Babylon I just the same today the devil is walking he is seeing he is looking with an attentive eye and he's seeing the things that he would have taken of this world and when he look into Montego Bay he see a child that should have been in Jerusalem he see a woman that should have been in her husband home and he would have destroyed their relationship and he says isn't this I the devil who is great and he looked again he sees pastors that he would have destroyed their ministry. And he says again, isn't this the Babylon that I have created confusion? And he looked and he see elders who he would have torn down and he looked in their life and he laughed again. And he says, isn't this the Babylon that I have created? He looked in the congregation, he sees some people who are dear but they our hearts are far from god and he says ha, 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 isn't this babylon that i have created but i'm so glad that in those moments when the devil is rejoicing when the devil seems as if he has conquered when the devil is higher than humans can see there is still a god who is above him i'll say that again when the devil seems to be at his highest remember there is a car who sits in the heavens of the heavens that there is a still a god oh i wish i had some time i wish i had some worshiper i wish i had a congregation but i want to tell you that there is a god who sits in heaven and is taking record you see while the words escape the king's mouth <laughs> they fell a voice from heaven and say oh nebuchadnezzar to thee it is spoken the kingdom is depart from thee i'm so glad today i can look at the devil and i can tell him even though you have your kingdom that god's kingdom will destroy your kingdom even though you may have your big moment though i may be losing a fight with you today but i know you have already lost the war and the battle because God is still triumphant. I wish I had some worshippers. I wish I had some people who understand that even while the devil is making his big roaring sound, that there is a lion from the tribe of Judah. Ah, I wish I had uh, some worshippers who understand that in those days, when you seem as if you are unworn out, that you are suppressed and beat against the wall, that there is a Michael who will stand for his people because that Daniel chapter 12 tell me in those days when it seems as if all hope is lost <laughs> that Michael himself would stand for his people. I wish I had some worshippers who understand that God will say enough is enough. Devil, you have reigned. Devil, you have seemed to be strong, but today, this is your end. A day is coming, Montego Bay. A day is coming when God's going to put an end to all flesh. All I say, if you don't on the spiritual side yet, <laughs> run for your life. Because a day is, I didn't even remember to give you a topic. I didn't even. I, my topic today is get on your knees. Hallelujah. Get on your knees. You see, if you don't get on your knees willfully, then you're going to get there forcefully. Because I hear that in that day, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. If you don't get on your knees and cry out to the God who makes and creates, if you don't get on your knees and speak to the one who has your future in his hand, if you don't get on your knees, willingly and speak to him day in day out a day is coming when you won't have any choice a day is coming when you don't have an option but you will get on your knees and you will confess that jesus is lord but i can tell you if you stay on your knees 
If you stay on your knees now, God's going to allow you to stand in his court. Somebody missed that. Ah, let me say that again. If you stay on your knees now, hallelujah. If you stay on your knees now, a day is coming when you shall rise triumphant. Ah, I'll say that again. A day is coming if you stay on your knees now that this mortal shall put on immortality. A day is coming if you stay on your knees now that God is going to give you a oh, a crown. I hear about that crown. You ask me what crown is that? It is called the Stephanos crown. It is that crown that is given to a victor. It is that crown that is given to somebody who would have overcome. But to him that overcome. Um, I shall grant the right. I tell you that there are many rights to eat of the tree of life, to walk with the lamb, to talk with Jesus. Ah, you don't have any right on earth yet. But can I tell you? Oh, I know you have to go to work. Let me close. Let me close. Let me close. Ah, oh, praise God. Praise God. Let me close. Let me close. But I'm telling you, get on your knees. I hear when I was going to Kentucky church, a little church, a little boy church, I used to hear my grandmother song, a, a little song like this. Come, let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about your struggle. He will hear a faintless cry and he will answer by and by. Now, when you feel a little fire is burning, then you know a little prayer returning. Have a little talk with Jesus. Make it right. Today, I'm telling you, that a tree angel's message is all over the Bible. If you look within every page, one thing that the Bible tells us is that sin and sinners will not last forever. That the devil is already defeated. The Bible says in Revelation that when God comes, he says that the fire wasn't meant for you. But he's going to say, go into the fire which was made for the devil and his angel. Hell fire wasn't made for you. But you can escape it. You can escape it. Just go on your knees. Speak to God daily. Sister Forbes tell you, it is the only way of connecting mortal men with an immortal God. Mortal men can get to a place that they are safe and abiding in Jesus. And that is a beautiful place to be. Today, you're here. You're saying, God, I want to be at rest. I want to have the peace that surpasses all human understanding. I want to be at peace with you. If that is your wish, you want to see Babylon fall, but you don't want to fall in Babylon. That is you. Just raise your hand as I pray. I know we are about to break through up our room. I don't know what happened yesterday, but I wasn't on it. But you're saying, I want to be in a place where I can see Babylon fall. I can witness it. I can see the stump of Babylon, even while our God is seeing those hands. I want to be able to see the stump of Babylon and understand that he is already defeated. I see those hands. There are only five hands raised. But for the five of you, I hope that today God will own six hands of raised. Ah, God is saying, I have seen. And even for those who haven't raised their hands yet, God says, I see your cry and I heard. But even while the devil is rejoicing, God's going to open up a way and say, today, 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 devil, today, today, today. Today, it's going to, there is a day when the devil is going to hear his last today. And today you can rejoice because that day is coming. Let us pray. Loving Father, how excellent is your name in all the earth. And we're so glad that your word speaks so profoundly to our heart. There are people here distressed by the things that the devil would have shown them. The things that the devil would have caused to be upon them. The devil would have oftentimes remind us, dear Father, that we are weak. But even while we are weak, dear Father, we serve a God who is strong, and that is you, Almighty One. We pray even now that you may continue, Father, to sing your Holy Spirit, to rest on minds, to open up our dark understanding, to open our eyes, to remove the veils from our eyes, so we can see that the devil has already been reduced to a stump. Babylon has already fallen. We are only looking at the rubbles, the little bits and pieces that are left. We understand that you would have sent your son who was like, would have hit the, ah, God, we understand that the devil is already defeated. But help us, dear Father, that while we see him, while we hear him boasting, 
isn't this the great Babylon that I have been? Help us to remind him that even this great Babylon, this great confusion that is in this world, that it will come to an end. I hear people, of people who are confused as towards their gender. I hear of people who are no longer uh, knowledgeable of how they are to raise their children. Even Adventists are at a point of confusion when they hear of the mark of the beast, when they hear of all the wickedness, the atrocities that are happening around them. They are confused, dear father, but even now, help them to understand that if they can see with spiritual eyes, then they would have seen that the devil is already defeated. Forgive us of our many sins, dear father, because we not acknowledge all our transgression. But we pray even more, father, for a heart like yours. Bless us now, we do pray, as we go throughout our day. Be with those who have to go to work. Let not the devil get them down even as they work for the people on earth, but work so more for you. We pray that you may give us all strength and courage to go through this day, we pray. Amen.